Welcome to this liturgy today. During this liturgy, we have three parts. The first is the liturgy of the word, veneration of the cross, and the Holy Communion. Please rise and stand in silence, asking the Lord for God, pardon and mercy. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations because of him kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. For those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by the people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was in our infirmities that he bore our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. 
but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb to, led to slaughter, or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned to him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in the fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Please be seated for the proclamation of the gospel. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden, and into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with him. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the father gave me? Were you there when they crucified my Oh, 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 oh,
So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was cold, and they were warming themselves. Peter also was standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the role. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own? Or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my king did belong, my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. 
for this i was born and for this i came into the world to testify to the truth everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice pilate said to him what is truth when he had said this he again went out to the jews and said to them i find no guilt in him but you have a custom that i release one prisoner to you at passover do you want me to release to you the king of the jews they cried out again not this one but barabbas now barabbas was a rough revolutionary then pilate took jesus and had him scourged and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak and they came to him and said Hail, king of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would not have power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Gagletha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle, Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. 
Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple, their whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, on Good Friday, what captures our attention is the cross. Because by dying on the cross, Jesus transformed the cross into an instrument of salvation. That's why it is said, only Jesus could build a bridge to heaven with just two pieces of wood. And then, when nailed to the cross, before dying on the cross, Jesus used the cross as his pulpit one last time. Hanging on the cross, each word would have cost him tremendously. But then he spoke. He spoke seven times. Among them, let us reflect on four words of Jesus from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. People who are sentenced to death die either proclaiming their innocence or condemning the judges who sentenced them to death or asking pardon for their sins. But on that Good Friday, Jesus asked no pardon but gave it. The first word of Jesus from the cross was a plea for forgiveness on our behalf. He asked forgiveness for those who preferred Barabbas to him, who mocked him, who hammered him to the cross. This shows that Jesus came to forgive and continues to forgive us even now. My dear brothers and sisters, let's examine our lives and see what is withholding us from asking God's forgiveness from our sins? And what is withholding us from forgiving one another? As we come forward to venerate the cross, let us nail our sins to the cross, realizing Jesus is ever willing to forgive us. The second word that Jesus spoke from the cross, I tell you, this day you will be with me in paradise. The thief on the, on the left mocked Jesus, asking Jesus to save himself and them. But the one on the right turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. What we see here is a great paradox that a dying man asked a dying man for eternal life. The paradox is a thief at the door of death stole heaven. What we notice here is that how much Jesus loves a repentant sinner. Because the first to be assured heaven was not a saint, but a thief. It was perhaps the thief's first prayer, the last prayer, and the only prayer. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not give up on ourselves as we have hope in the crucified Lord. It is never too late to come back to Jesus in repentance. And today, as we come forward to venerate the cross, let's pray for ourselves in the words of the repentant sinner. Look at Jesus on the cross and say, Jesus, 
remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the next word, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When we look at, the, look at Jesus on the cross, we can imagine if there was anything more he could have given us out of his great love for us. In fact, nothing. He gave up everything to save us from eternal death. On the cross, we see Jesus, his garments are consigned to the executioners, his blood to the earth, his body to the grave, his mother to John the Apostle, and his soul to his heavenly Father. He entrusted all he had left to his Father in heaven. It is a prayer of complete surrender and trust in God. Again, as we come forward to venerate the cross, let's make it our prayer of surrender to Jesus, saying, Jesus, I trust in you. The next word, I thirst. On the cross, Jesus was not only thirsty for drink, but was thirsty for our souls. How do we know this? We know this from Jesus' encounter with a Samaritan woman at the well when he had asked for a drink. It was not actual water that Jesus spoke of, but rather the promise of eternal life to her. He thirsted for the woman's soul to give her eternal life. In fact, Jesus had a chance to drink wine mixed with myrrh prior to his crucifixion, but he declined. The drink would have acted as a sedative, dulling some of his pain. But Jesus chose to experience his full suffering so that we would never have to know what kind of pain that was. That's how, my dear brothers and sisters, we can understand it is more than water that he thirsts for our souls. And so we need to see Jesus' thirst, not just on the physical level, but on the divine level, expressing his longing for us to come to know him, love him, and live with him in heaven. Again, as we come forward to venerate the cross, let's promise Jesus that we are ready to quench his thirst by offering him our repentant souls. My dear brothers and sisters, the summary of the story of our salvation is love. The greatest symbol of love is not anymore heart, but the cross. Because the heart may stop beating any time, but the Jesus on the cross never stops loving us. We now move to the second part of our liturgy today, the veneration of the cross. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her, 
throughout the whole world and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Please rise. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect Pope Francis chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for a bishop Rickon, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that, having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, the reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living ever God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, Hear graciously the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty and ever-living God, 
grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the role through Christ our Lord amen, amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right with sincerity of heart they may find the way to God himself Almighty ever living God who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to come to rest grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you the one true god the father of our human race through christ our lord amen let us pray also for those in public office that our god and lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all almighty ever living god in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of the peoples look with favor we pray on those who govern with authority over us that throughout the whole role the prosperity of peoples the assurance of faith assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through christ our lord amen, amen. let us pray dearly beloved to god the father almighty that he may cleanse the world of all errors banish disease drive out hunger unlock prisons loose and fetters granting to travelers safety to pilgrims return health to the sick and salvation to the dying almighty ever living god comfort of mourners strength of all who toil May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice and because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord Amen Please be seated
Please rise and face the cross in the center aisle. Behold the word of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the word of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the word of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. You are welcome to venerate the cross as individuals or as a spouse or as a family. Thank you. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day The soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back. And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head. And he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah Christ, the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. The blood that would cleanse the souls of all men made its way through the heart of Jerusalem. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb came the 
Messiah Christ, the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Dearest and best 
For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a